the Duke was in the land of the Incas, the romantic and in many ways mysterious race, the ruins of whose civilization are almost their only record. At Machu Picchu, a town not discovered till 1910, the history of the Incas stands there in stone for the archaeologist to make of it what he can. This is Peru, dominated by the Incas for at least 500 years before the 16th century, when they yielded to the all-conquering Spaniards. Surely of all the varied sites of Prince Philip's tour, nothing can have been more impressive than the Inca ruins. Not far from Machu Picchu lie the remains of Cusco, capital city of the vanished civilization. It's now a town of 70,000 people. In the heyday of the Incas, it probably had a population of 200,000. Obviously, the Duke was a welcome visitor. A pilot car stood on the rails, ready for the train, by which Prince Philip continued his journey. He has mapped out such an ambitious tour in the vast continent that it must always seem time to be moving again. Now it was the turn of Puno to greet him. The population of 16,000 seemed to be a happy lot, eager to entertain the royal traveler from Britain. stands on Lake Titicaca. Through this inland sea of 16,000 square miles runs Peru's border with Bolivia, the next country on the royal schedule. The ship's destination was Guaki, on the southern tip of the lake. Parading in the Duke's honor was a military guard. Guaki was the place of arrival and almost immediate departure, this time to the nearby seat of the Bolivian government, La Paz, a city of 350,000 people. They and most Bolivians, except those of Spanish descent, are of Inca origin. The name Bolivia derives from the man who liberated the country from its Spanish conquerors, Simon Bolivar. In La Paz, Prince Philip was escorted by the head of the government, President Estensoro. The Duke had the sort of welcome usually reserved nowadays for astronauts. At the presidential palace, the Duke conferred upon Dr. Estensoro the GCMT. The industrial school Pedro Domingo Murillo trains students to be engineers or technicians to fit the country's industrial development program. The Duke was in his element here as a technically minded man in touch with youngsters with their foot on the ladder. Here the new rubs shoulders with the old. When the Duke's car couldn't grip the muddy slope, there were willing hands in plenty. Back in the city, it was clear that La Paz couldn't have too much of Prince Philip. At the stadium, the Duke saw a performance of the Devil Dance, believed to have originated in Spain at least 600 years ago. At 17,000 feet above sea level stands the world's highest inhabited laboratory, the Cosmic Physics Lab at Chacotaya. Another place certain to capture the interest of the man who once lectured on TV about the geophysical year. Science being international, it's fitting that Chakotaya should be largely a multi-nation project. Descending from the snowy heights, 
the Duke was driven to the Fabulosa Mine, which is not far from La Paz. It employs about 500 men and women. They march past in military style. Fabulosa produces tin to the annual value of 600,000 pounds. The metal is Bolivia's biggest export. British investors provided 98% of the mine's capital. Farewell to Bolivia and west over the Andes to Chile, that long country stretching 2,800 miles from the subtropics down to Cape Horn at the very tip of the continent. Throughout that great length, Chile is rarely more than 100 miles wide. The first destination was the capital, Santiago, the city of close on 2 million people, thriving, bustling, modern. Accompanying Prince Philip was the president of Chile. One side of interest of the visitor was the arch, commemorating the part played by British volunteers in the liberation of the country, of which it was now the 150th anniversary. Prince Philip was a long way from home, half a world away. So how pleasant must have been this celebration, linking a friendly South American people with our own.